August or September-ish, host an educational workshop for local producers in November or December, which is what we've got here. Uh, so originally this grant was just going to go for two years, but you know, it's been really popular and the conservation district was actually able to get extended for uh, two for an additional two years, so it's been extended until March of 2018. And also we've got a cover crop application for the conservation district. If any of you guys are interested in planting some cover crops on any of your crop fields this year, uh, we have a copy of that on the table. So some cover crops that were planted in 2016, we had five sites planted to cover crops this year. 158.6 acres were cost shared through this grant, which totaled $3,172 cost shared. Uh, all five of these locations are going to be utilized by livestock in, in one way or another this fall or winter. So this one we had a couple of dry land fields west of Hardin. It was seeded on the 30th of May of this year. It was about 100 acres. It was planted with the John Deere no-till disc drill. It was planted into no-till fallow ground. The previous crop was winter wheat in 2015. So essentially it's, it's three fields that were next to each other. Two of those fields were planted to different cover crop mixes and then the other field is, was left in chem fallow. Evan's going to talk a little more in a few minutes on, on this because that's one that we did a, a soil moisture sensor study on it. Uh, the producer hated this field this fall in order to get it planted back to winter wheat uh, for 20, to harvest in 2017. So the mix that was planted on the kind of the, the northernmost field of the cover crops was spring pea, hairy vetch, grazing corn, proso millet, radish, mustard, turnip, and sunflower, and then a total of 25.7 pounds per acre. So that winds up being four cool season broadleaves, two warm season broadleaves, and then two warm season grasses. On the south mix is lentils, hairy vetch, sorghum sedan, pearl millet, mustard, kale, and sunflower. So this one had three cool season broadleaves, two warm season broadleaves, and two warm season grasses. So here are just a few pictures. This is all, all Evan's uh, photography here. So this was taken uh, June 23rd. This was June 30th, uh, July 15th, July 21st, July 28th. August 4th, August 11th. Uh, so it, it's kind of a neat series of pictures so you can kind of see how that, that cover crop grows this year. Uh, we were able to go and clip this, do some dry weight production on it. We just air dried it. We clipped it the 21st of September. Uh, we tried to make sure that we sampled the same soil types and did three random, or two, we did two random locations in each field. I should have corrected that. Uh, so what we wound up getting on the north mix, let's see, I think it, it wound up totaling, you know, 3,500 pounds per acre and roughly 1.8 tons per acre of production that we got on there. And on the southern mix, that ended up being somewhat closer, it was like 3,700 pounds per acre and 1.88 tons per acre. And then we had a another dry land field that was west of Hardin. This one was planted uh, the middle of June this year with the hoe type air drill. It was into tilled fallow ground, 28.6 acres. This one had just four species planted. They wanted to do, uh, they wanted to do a mix that was gonna uh, try and scavenge some of the nutrients that was in the soil. And the person was was going to plan to uh, hay it, but I don't think he was able to hay it this year, so I'm sure he's maybe going to graze it. So that had two cool season broadleaves, one warm season broadleaf, one warm season grass. We had an irrigated field that was east of Hardin. That was seeded June 4th, planted with the John Deere uh, box disc drill. Uh, this was a former pasture, and it was land leveled. Was it last last fall or last spring, okay. Approximately 10 acres, there's eight species planted. Hairy vetch, crimson clover, hay barley, corn, forage, collards, mustard, sunflower, and buckwheat. Uh, and the producer does plan to graze it this fall, correct Evan? All right. 
Oh, we had another field that was by the, the Benteen area. This was planted mid-June uh, this year with a, a John Deere no-till disc drill. This was about 101.6 acres. Uh, the, the grant, you know, that just covered 40 acres of, of cost share on it. Ten species were planted. The field was grazed early fall and it was grazed before we were able to get a, an accurate clipping on this one. So, but we, we were able to get out there and get a few pictures taken of it. This was, this had been grazed, so, you know, as you can see, those cows, they really, you know, they, they really like those, those tap-rooted crops. They'll, they'll munch on those quite a bit. And this was a little hard to see. This picture wasn't as clear as I thought it was when I put it on the, in the PowerPoint. But, you know, you can definitely see those cows are getting some pretty good amount of protein there. I think you could have, they could have probably thrown that at a screen door and not hit a single wire. It's pretty runny. Uh, then we also had the cover crop soil health tour. This was held the 24th of August. We had seven participants. I went to three cover crop locations in the Hardin area. Two of the sites were locations that had been cost shared through the conservation district's grant and then another site that had been cost shared through an equip contract. The 223 grant it helped cover the cost of the rental van to transport the participants to the locations and they also provided refreshments. Uh, North 48, they were also available to, to visit with participants for tips about planting cover crops and a few different soil health related questions. Uh, do you guys have any, any questions on any of the cover crops that were planted or, or anything? All right. The grant will go again through 2017. So for anyone that's interested in, in signing up for that, we do have uh, an application available. What you'll do is uh, you'd fill out the application, uh, bring it in to us. We can work with you on doing a map, uh, work on doing a cover crop mix. And then we bring that to Gloria, our district administrator for the conservation district. And then they review that at the board meeting and they approve it. and. And that's, you know, roughly how the, the process works. And then once the cover crop is planted, you know, you save your, save your receipts so you can turn them in and, and we can do the as-built on it and the conservation district is able to reimburse you for uh, the cost of your, your cover crop seed. So, yeah, good question, Evan. Thanks. All right. Next up, we got 